Today's video is all about some underappreciated scarlet and violet cards. In fact, 12 of them. Now, my take on some of the scarlet and violet cards has always been positive. Okay, I've never rubbished the sets. I've given some constructive feedback across the time, but you know, it's really actually starting to grow on me. And I'll get to an extra point that adds on to that in a second. But when it comes to Scarlet and Violet cards, I've always been a fan of the artwork. I've always said the artwork is absolutely phenomenal. And I've always said hats off to the artists. They've done a fantastic job. The only real constructive criticism I've said to Scarlet and Violet era is that I just, I just feel they've missed a couple of tricks along the way when it comes to certain sets. And that might be, you know, the injection of some certain Gen 1, 2, 3 or 4 Pokemon or 5 that everyone sort of knows and loves just to, to finish off or top off a set. Now, that doesn't mean there's not some absolutely beautiful Scarlet and Violet cards. And that's what we're going to go through today. 12 of them that I think are quite underappreciated and perhaps even undervalued, which could turn out to be good investments in the long run. Now, I said I'd add a little extra point onto a comment that I made before and to sort of <clears throat> further that comment, what I mean by, you know, Scarlet and Violet starting to grow on me is it's funny. It's always funny. Sets like, we've seen it with sets like Fusion Strike and Chilling Rain and even Astral Radiance where so many people are on this bandwagon wagon that they're, they're mid to low sets and the moment they start to jump up in price, everyone starts to like them. It's like, you know, it's no good until it is good. And then when it is good, everyone likes it. It's a funny sort of concept, isn't it? It's almost like, you know, that, for lack of a better word, it's almost like that herd mentality. As soon as enough of the herd jumps on board with it and really likes it, all of a sudden, everyone likes it and you're out of the herd if you don't like it. Therefore, you know, you better like it, otherwise you're an outcast. So it's funny how those sort of things happen in the Pokemon card world. And I can tell you now, the exact same thing's going to happen with Scarlet and Violet. The sentiment from me has always been super positive towards the artwork. I just feel they missed a few tricks, like I said. However, there's also some overall sentiment that Scarlet and Violet has not kicked off where Sword and Shield left off. Now, I've done plenty of videos highlighting how strong Scarlet and Violet's first six sets are compared to Sword and Shield's first six sets. I guess it's just that those trainer gallery era cards uh, coupled with alternate art sets from, you know, I guess, you know, br uh, Brilliant Stars onwards, but then, of course, you had Evolving Skies, Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike before that. That's going to go down in history, isn't it? Like, that's just a, a fantastic era of Pokemon cards. But having said that, Scarlet and Violet, I can tell you now, a lot of these illustration rares will go down the same vein as a lot of the trainer gallery cards and a lot of the special illustration rares will go down the same reign as alternate art pokemon cards so don't underestimate the investment future of scarlet and violet so to jump into 12 cards that i think are a little bit underappreciated and maybe undervalued let's start off with one just one from scarlet and violet base which is drowsy the artwork on this is just phenomenal it's an original 151 pokemon yes it's not a popular pokemon but at five dollars 38 the artwork, the Pokemon, original 151, it just feels a little bit undervalued and a little bit underappreciated, this card. Now, I'm not going to say it's ever going to be a $40 or $50 card. It's just not. But if you can buy in at $5.38 and add a beautiful card to your collection and then all of a sudden it becomes a $10 card or even a $9 card one day, you know, you've made an 80 to 100% gain on that card, which is really, really good going. Uh, moving along... I don't know if this one's underappreciated because it's starting to get the love it deserves, but I wanted to showcase it, and that's Raichu from Powdaya Evolved. The sleepy Raichu, I remember making a short about Powdaya Evolved literally when it was about to come out and just highlighting, I don't do shorts anymore, I only do long-form content, but I remember highlighting how good Raichu was and you know how much of a sleeper it was, and I see it being a you know top three card inside the set, and what do you know? Here it is. It's currently at $41.08. It's getting the love that it deserves, and it's really shot up over the last couple of months, like a lot of Powdaya Evolved cards. Now, the big question everyone wants to know is, will Powdaya Evolved get a reprint? Booster box pricing shot up. Singles pricing shot up. There's obviously demand for it. When prices shoot up, demand is clearly outweighing supply. Now, there's still supply around, 
It's just the price of the supply has gone up and people are still buying it. If people are still buying it when it goes up, that's what causes upward pressure on the pricing of things and we see increases in prices, of course. So will it get a reprint? You hear lots of different stories, don't you? My personal thoughts is it will get a reprint in about three to five months' time. You know, leading out of US's summer and maybe back into their winter when we see that typical reprint. I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of sets like Obsidian Flames and Pad Air Evolved, maybe even English 151 get a reprint. I could be wrong, but I'd be I'd be extremely surprised if there was no like no second wave at all, not even a small one. So um, if it's a small, a very small reprint, I think it'll put a little bit of downward pressure on the price, of course, of car, of singles and box. And then this set will rebound pretty quickly. It's a really sought after Scarlet and Violet Violet era set. Depending on the size of the uh, the reprint, will just if it even gets one. Depending on the size of the reprint, will be uh, dependent on how much it impacts uh, singles and sealed pricing. The next one I want to show two more from Pad Air Evolved, the Tauros. Damn, that's a good-looking cut, $5.80. Surely that's undervalued. Original $151, the artwork on it's just phenomenal. I know pull rates are pretty easy on it, but that's a really, really good-looking Pokemon card. And to finalise or finish off with Powder Evolve, the Sato Wudu, chilling out, hiding in the trees there at $6.46. Now, if we look back at a lot of the Trainer Gallery cards, and this is what I wanted to mention, you know, a lot of them were, you know, three, four, five dollar cards and a lot of them are shot up to nine twelve fifteen dollar cards so not only will you get a like cool card for your collection in cards like the taurus the sato wudu even the drowsy i mentioned from scarlet and violet base but you know they could i'm not saying they will but they could well be can't they feel a little undervalued and i said this about trainer gallery cards you know six months ago and here we are you know trainer gallery cards are starting to get the love that they deserve, the recognition that they deserve. So I really think some of these illustration rares that are hovering around that five to ten US dollar price, that are really nice artworks with some somewhat fan favourite Pokemon or well known Pokemon, will shoot up in price. They just, I can't say they're not. Uh, I only chose one from Obsidian Flames, and that's the Nine Tails at six dollars thirty eight. Again, Nine Tails is an original one fifty one Pokemon. This artwork, I remember when it first came out, everyone was like, oh, you know, other than the Charizard, of course, what's going to be the second main chase card? Is it going to be the Nine Tails? Is it going to be the Gloom from City and Flames? And I just feel Nine Tails is left by the wayside a little bit in this set. And it's got some room for growth. It's a really good looking card. And I think it's something that could double in price in the next, you know, 12 to 24 months. A uh, couple from 151. I've raved about this card nonstop. That is Alakazam, $28.35. Will 151 get reprinted? Again, we, we don't have crystal balls. I'm not going to stand here and say it will get reprinted because we don't know. Uh, we only know when, you know, the supply chain passes its way down. Pokemon Company International opens up orders and distribution and then it flows on to, you know, LGSs and online LGSs to be able to get allocation of stock. And until that happens, we don't know. But come on, it's such a sought-after set. Uh, there's some upward pressure on a lot of prices that will come soon if it doesn't get reprinted. So there's every chance, in my opinion, that it will cop a small reprint, even a medium or large size reprint. If it doesn't, that's great. Pick up singles, you're not going to go wrong, eh? But Alakazam at $28.35, I think is undervalued. And another one I feel is undervalued from 151 is the Dragonair. This is a beautiful card, $15.56 currently on TCG Player and US Dollars. And that is a really, really nice looking Pokemon. In fact, the Alakazam and Dragonair are probably my two favourite special illustration rares slash illustration rares from 151. I think they're beautiful looking cards. Moving along to Paradox Rift. No. Let's have a look at Power Day and Fates really quickly first. I only picked one from this. And I know it's a trainer, not a Pokemon, but the Penny. There's, if you look closely, there's an Umbreon in the front. And it looks like there's an Eevee on a back, or is it an Eevee backpack? It's a bit hard to tell on that artwork. And my eyesight's not the best. So, uh, hey, that's a cool looking card though, especially with Umbreon in the forefront at $13.44. Again, I feel it's a little bit undervalued. Sweet card for your collection and every chance that it could, you know, become a 20 or 25 US dollar card in the future. Uh, where are we up to? Let's have a look at Paradox Rift. Now, here's one. Here's one that if I were to pick one from this list, this is the one I feel is most undervalued, underrated, and that's the Steelix from Paradox Rift. Look at the detail and artwork inside this. This is one cool Pokemon card. 
And this is what I think is going to be you know, recognized in the future. As soon as we move on to that new era, okay, people will look back to Scarlet and Violet like they're doing with Sword and Shield at the moment and they'll just go, hold on. Hold on a second. All these cards that we thought were eh, mid, hearsay, here sort of, you know, a bit nowhere are actually really, really solid cards. Coupled with another one from Paradox Rift, the Tulip at $7.58. I just feel that's a little bit undervalued. And I finally wanted to show you two from Temporal Forces, the Metagross at five bucks. Five dollars one this is currently going for, for Metagross. Metagross is you know, one of those Pokemon that, uh, yeah, it's not a fan favorite, but it's, you know, it's close, isn't it? It's one of those, I suppose, B tier Pokemon. Five dollars, that's pretty cheap, isn't it? And another one, original 151 from Temporal Forces, the Arbok. Check out the artwork inside this card, three dollars 84. So just to summarize those whole 12 cards, I just feel, you know, everything is underappreciated until it is appreciated. And that sort of summarizes the point that I was saying at the start that everything's sort of unpopular until it is popular. And when enough of the herd decides that it's popular, Unless you jump on board with them, you're going to be the one in the wrong, aren't you? So it's funny. I feel like a lot of these Scarlet and Violet illustration rares and special illustration rares will start getting their time in the sun soon and everyone will jump on board saying they're really sweet cards and we, you know, we should have bought more and then sealed products will go up. And you know what? The whole Pokemon investing side of things will just repeat itself once again. I'm Michael. This is Pokey Oz. Catch everyone next time.